guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now today guys, I'm going to be talking to you about how to care for Tillandsia cacticola, the air plant that loves to grow on cacti. So here we go guys, this is um, my Tillandsia cacticola air plant and it's quite a remarkable uh, air plant in that it grows in its natural habitats on rocks and also cacti and we actually have our cacticola here not on a cactus we have it on one of our euphorbias that is cactus like but it's sort of just perfect to uh, display it here it does very well so this is our, our Tillandsia cacticola and now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this amazing air plant and how you can care for it. Now all Tillandsias are part of the bromeliard family and um, although bromeliards obviously are not air plants they're related to the bromeliard family in, the, in their flowers and they have um, very beautiful often very striking colourful flowers on the air plants. And Tillandsia cacticola, cacticola actually means growing on cacti. That's the cacticola, me, uh, cacticola meaning of the word. And it's a beautiful air plant that forms a rosette of whitish, whitish green leaves, as you can see here. And the leaves can reach individually a length of about 30 to 40 centimetres. And you see how long, how long they are here. Now it grows naturally in its, its natural habitat in northern Peru, as I say, on rocks and cacti, hence its name. And it's found at altitudes above 2,000 metres above sea level. And it is, it is more, more of a rarer Tillandsia in uh, cultivation, although it's becoming a lot more popular now, especially with uh, cactus and succulent growers like myself. And uh, very sort of bit of a novelty type of Tillandsia to grow. And all Tillandsias have, um, what I'll just show you here, these are the leaves, they have something what's called trichomes. And these are the little whitish little scales on here. And there are many, many, many tiny, tiny little scales and that's where they take their moisture from in their environments and water, usually coming from sort of natural mist and uh, rains where they absorb the, the moisture and the water and the nutrients through these many trichomes. And in this case here with the cacticola, it's more of a sort of whitish green one. As you show, we have quite a few different tillantias in our window here. The lighting is not great, so I won't go and show you all of them on there. But usually the darker coloured uh, Tillandsia, usually the more moisture it can take. As I say, the lighter, usually it's more of a, of a drier atmosphere it likes. As I say, this one grows in uh, northern Peru, so it's used to being a lot more arid than some of the many other types of the darker colour Tillandsias that like more humidity. So that's a little bit about this amazing uh, Tillandsia. And now I'm going to talk to you about how to care for it. Now light. Now obviously due to their many trichomes and the, the lighter coloured leaves here, they, they, these particular Tillandsia, the Cacticola, likes to have bright light and it can take full sun to partial shade. Now ideally they, they like either morning or late afternoon sun. If this was in a window that got full hot sun, especially during the summer, can be a little bit too much, but they can sort of take a lot, definitely a lot more sun than many other air plants do. And this particular one here, we have a south facing window here, but it's a little bit off to the side. And it is, it sort of gets a lot of morning sun. And usually for a good few hours, when we get sunshine that is. Seems to do very well here. So as I say, they can take, they can take partial shade. Uh, but they do definitely like bright light and ideally some sunshine as well. As I say, they grow, grow in more of an arid environment with, with plenty of sunshine in their natural habitats. But the difference is with the sunshine in their natural habitats, there'd be a lot more ventilation. So if you have these growing in windows, um, intense sun, with the lack of, without the lack of ventilation, it, it's something you do have to be careful about. They do need ventilation here. So as I say, um, even morning or late afternoon sun is ideal, but all day, all day sun is best avoided unless plenty of ventilation can be provided. Now, if, it, if you're growing these in shade, you've only got a sunless window or even away from a window, which I wouldn't recommend. All air plants are living plants. They need light to photosynthesize. But if you can't provide them with a, with a bright window, then I'd recommend then installing a, a proper full spectrum grow light, like one of the many good LED lights on the 
on the market today. So that's the lighting. So ideally with the lighting, they're like bright, bright light, ideally with some sunshine, either morning or afternoon. Now watering. Now the Tillandsia capticola can take much less water than many of the other air plants can. And it's not dissimilar to the very common large growing Tillandsia, the Tillandsia xerographica, in that when it needs more water, the, these leaves here that are sort of quite sort of straight at the moment, it will start to go sort of, cur not necessarily curly like the xerographica would, but they'll start to go in almost like a little funnel shape resembling these. Now this is actually the old die, die back part of the mother plant which I'm going to talk about in a bit but that's how normally the fresh leaves would look all over the plant if it's not getting enough water. So that's always a good indication when it comes to how much t your, your Tillandsia cacticola is hydrated or not. And um, ideally from spring to late fall it's good to give the Tillandsia cacticola a thorough soaking until drop off and when I say until drop off, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly soak this plant so it's completely dripping with water and um, don't just give it a mist in because that, will only, that won't do nothing but just increase humidity. Thoroughly soak the plant so it's dripping with water and um, the, the other option as well is you can also give the, the, whole of the, the whole of the plant a soak in a bucket of water or bowl of water Ideally for about five minutes. Now, some, many of the Tillandsia air plants, you can recommend leaving them in, in water, sometimes even overnight or for many hours to give them the good soak. But with this one, because it is more one of the arid type of Tillandsias, I would only recommend giving it a good soaking for five minutes. So it's thoroughly soaked, giving it a bit of a shake, turn it upside down on a dry, either a dry paper towel or a dry towel. And so, so there's no water collecting here in the tops where it could cause rot and then obviously put it back into its place. And as long as, as the whole of the plant sort of dries up within 30 minutes, so after 30 minutes, if it's still soaking wet, it's taking, being, being kept wet for too long. So ideally it should be dry after about 30 minutes. So I say two options, either give it a third of a soaking with the, with the spray bottle, or give it a dunking in water for about five minutes. Now, when it comes to the water, um, I would recommend rainwater every single time over tap water. Um, it's a bit controversial online. Personally, I wouldn't recommend tap water because tap water does contain, it's usually contain quite a bit of lime. And because of the trichomes, which as I say, the many, many little tiny little scales all over their leaves, lime will eventually block these and uh, stop the plant from taking up uh, n nourishment. So I wouldn't recommend it. Now, if you have sort of, if your water is, probably no higher than pH of seven, and you only have water, you can't get rainwater, or you can't get bottled water. Bottled water is another good option. If you can't get bottled water, then I'd recommend leaving your tap water to stand overnight for 24 hours before using it on Tillances. But personally, I would only really recommend, if you can, clean, pure rainwater with these plants. And then the next best thing would be bottled water. Now, watering in the winter time, it, it really does depend on your living, your type of conditions that you have for your cacticola because obviously in the winter you have the air, the air condition, so the central heating on and that can also dry the plants out more. But I would recommend in winter at least once a week thoroughly soaking again until drip off with a, with a spray or soaking water for about two minutes. You don't need to soak it as long in the winter time and then again shake turn it upside down let it drain and give it a shake and then put it back in its position again now however if, if the winter temperatures inside your your home are very high and dry for as i say central heating um, bear in mind that central heating is a lot drier than the desert air then possibly twice a week may be best as i say it's difficult to judge when to, uh, ha when this plant is getting enough water or how much you're watering the best way of judging it is by knowing when the leaves go sort of tubular like that that start to curl up as i say this is just the the dead part of the mother plant there but if the fresh leaves were going like that they were curling up then it needs more water so you just really have to go by eye as they say so that's the watering and now i'm going to talk about feeding now when it comes to feeding uh, the cacticola um, spring and summer, you can use a special 
air plant feed and only this is really really important guys when it comes to fertilizing air plants only use an air plant fertilizer don't use a normal type of houseplant feed the reason being that most houseplant fertilizers contain copper and copper is highly toxic to air plants so you know if you're using normal houseplant feed and, and you're using it on your tillantias, it can kill them over time. So don't use anything else unless it's special fertilizer for tillantias. And um, I actually have made a video on what I use and also how to fertilize tillantias. So do check that video out, guys. I, I explain what I use in there and um, also how I feed my tillantias. Links to that video are up above. So do check that out. I say no normal house plant feed due to the copper and um, I would recommend feeding these for in the spring and summer only sort of every two weeks um, I mix a little feed up in the um, in the little spray bottle and give them a good spray good good spray with it every couple of weeks in the winter I don't fertilize at all and bed up fertilizing is not a necessity for any of your tillandsia air plants it's not um, it's not that you have to do it but it does give them a little bit of a booster and it says to help with the flowering too now temperature now i would recommend uh with the cacti cola it is a tropical plant as you know and i would definitely recommend no lower of a temperature than 10 celsius which is 50 degrees fahrenheit and ideally no higher than 30 celsius which is around sort of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you could say, well, these grow in northern Peru and 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures, and they grow on cacti. That's true, but the difference is, in their natural habitats, they will have plenty of ventilation. This is what I was saying about the sunshine with the light levels. These, these tillances can take full sunshine all day in their natural habitats but if you're growing them indoors behind glass or in greenhouses and things like that obviously without the proper ventilation even with all the windows open you can't compare it to its natural habitat so any higher than 86 degrees Fahrenheit is not really good now if you live in a very warm climate and obviously you're in you're growing this plant indoors spring or summer you can also put the chance of your outside so it gets plenty of ventilation and therefore it can take a lot higher light levels then as well with the fresh air but as I say definitely ideally no lower than 10 celsius 50 degrees 50 degree Fahrenheit because lower than that um, can be dangerous for this tillandsia and they certainly cannot take any type of frost at all. Now I'll talk a little bit now about humidity. Now as I say although although these the cacti cola grows on cacti and in northern Peru where you think oh it's gonna be nice and warm and everything the but bear in mind that even in a very warm sort of arid type of environment the average air humidity naturally will be about 70% now the average home in the even in the middle of winter especially with the central heating on can be as low as 30 percent humidity anything from 30 percent to 70 percent and sometimes drier in the winter as i say with all the central heating on now the good news about this particular tillandsia the cacticola it adapts very well to dry homes so if if you have the central heating on in the winter and it's only 40 percent 30 percent 40 percent humidity this plant will adapt very well to that but just bear in mind when it when it it's very difficult to say about the humidity as such because again it's all down to moisture and you will know when this tillandsia is in need of more moisture therefore water when these leaves stop from going straight like they are now into more tubular and it will start to go very sort of thin and tubular then it's a sign as even if it is a very dry humidity in your house give it more water and it will still go straight again. As I say, they're not particularly fussy with humidity. They can take very well to the dry air of the home. Now, also when I'm talking about humidity, this is sort of to do with the air more so than humidity. Avoid spraying perfumes, air fresheners, hairsprays, body sprays and the like around this, uh, all your tillantsias in fact, not just this one, because as I say they, they contain trichomes and if you're spraying hairsprays, body sprays and all the other perfumes and everything, they, the molecules will go in the air and it can land onto your tillantsias and block the trichomes. So if you're spraying perfumes and everything like that, body sprays, air fresheners, then do do it away from your tillantsias. Now flowering, wow, 
this I have to say this Tillandsia cacticola produces one of the most striking and very long lasting flowers and I this this has flowered a couple of times for us already and I've made a video when this this actual Tillandsia cacticola was flowering you have to check it out guys link to that video up above it has it has the most huge flower spike and the most beautiful beautiful lilac colored um, pinkish coloured flower bracts and out of these flower bracts come really beautiful white coloured flowers it's an absolutely striking flower and it lasts for absolutely weeks I think I think ours lasts for about four months it was remarkable guys so do check that video out they, they really are beautiful beautiful flowering plants and as I say if it's given the, the right lighting and the right conditions and a bit of fertilizing too helps to give the the cacticola a lovely bloom as it's a, the, one of the most beautiful flowering and long lasting of of the air plants now then propagation now propagation is by seed and offsets now offsets are much easier obviously than growing from seed and these believe it or not although i say this is my tillandsia cacticola these are actually the two pups as they call them that originally came from the main mother plant and that if you watch that video of, of when this plant was in flower this was actually the main mother plant um, which we had from the beginning and the mother plant as you can see here that's why it's all all shriveling there is dying back and the two little pups that came from the top have now taken over the mother plant and some people do detach them but I leave them on I, th I think they look great so obviously offsets is from the um, what comes from the mother plant when it dies back and then the, the offsets then flower the following year once they've taken over from the mother plant. And this particular Tillandsia, the Cacticola, doesn't really produce more than two pups at a time. Sometimes it'd just be one, but, but no more than two. Some of the other Tillandsias will produce quite a lot of pups after the mother plant has died back. Sorry, the mother plant has flowered and then dies back. But the Cacticola only produces two. But as it's a large growing Tillandsia, that's pretty good. So um, lovely to see. Um, by seed, obviously, is from the from the flowers. If you get seed um, as well, so that can be exciting. Obviously, a much longer longer process by seed than by by the offsets. Now pruning. Now it's very easy just to look after after these these tillandsias. Now sort of this is. This is the mother plant that's dying back, but I might prune this back to make it look a bit more tidier. Sometimes you'll get sometimes the end of the tips that go a little bit brown. Sometimes that's also a, another indication that it needs a bit more humidity or moisture or water in. But in this case, it's doing pretty, pretty well. I've made a video on how to prune the dead dead leaves and, and tips and flower heads and that off your Tillandsia plant. So do check that video out. I'll put that link up above. All you have to do really is just get a pair, clean nail scissors are often ideal because they're small and just cut off any of the dried up pieces just to tidy it up a little bit. And then displaying them. Now I would personally avoid using terrariums to display air plants. A lot of people use terrariums. I personally am not a fan of them because Tillandsias, like the majority of plants in general, unless they're really, you know, moisture loving ones, do love plenty of ventilation. So terrariums can sometimes be difficult to provide the ventilation because they have glass going all the way around, especially the closed terrariums. If you have to have one at all, make sure it doesn't have a lid. But personally, this, this Cacticola does love, as I've mentioned before, plenty of ventilation, which is why we have this here on one of our euphorbia. So it's got plenty of ventilation going around it there. And uh, as I say, when you're displaying them, you often see I've lost count of how many, especially on Instagram and things like that, people displaying their air plants in the middle of their rooms, on tables and things like that. They need bright light. So if you're displaying these plants, put them near a good bright light source. Don't just put them in the middle of a room where it's just, it just doesn't get any natural light. Not unless you can provide them with an additional grow light that's full spectrum. And that's pretty much it on how to care for the Cacticola. So I hope you enjoyed that, enjoyed that guys. And as I say, it's a great, a great cactus, uh, cactus. It's a great, um, you, a great tillandsia to grow for cactus lovers. And uh, certainly a very wonderful, beautiful flowering and easy to grow tillandsia too. So 
do check it out guys if you haven't done already it's a wonderful one to add to your tillandsia air plant collection and at the end of this video now at the end screens i'm going to put on a playlist of all um all different types of videos on tillandsia air plants how to care for videos in there on individual things pruning feeding and also uh, when they're in flower quite a few of ours flower do check that out guys and thank you so much for watching and please do check out my website as well desertplantsofavalon.com and if you haven't done already please do subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell so guys thank you so much for all your support and i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.